Hey, this is Darnell with the Grill. Got myself three racks of baby back ribs, or otherwise known as loin back ribs. Same thing, baby back, loin back. And so I've got uh, about 9.3 pounds, almost 10 pounds of rib here, but it's three racks. And so I'm going to be smoking these on my Green Mountain Grills Daniel Boone with some gold premium blend Green Mountain Grill pellets because uh, I've still got tons of Green Mountain Grill pellets and the gold blend on ribs usually does pretty okay so going to uh, be getting these prepped now and so I'm going to show you how to prep them so whenever you want to make yourself some baby back ribs on your pellet smoker whether it be Traeger Rec Tech Green Mountain Grills Gorilla Grills or any of the others uh, you can see here how it's done and I think uh, the Barbecue Pit Boys put it very well in a recent video when they said there's not really a single right way to do these things, but this is a way you can do them. Alright, so I got these ribs out of the pack, and since I got three that I had to manipulate around, I've already gotten the membrane off the back. I've done a little bit of trimming top side, but with baby, baby backs you don't have to do too much in most cases because usually it's a lot of meat in the baby backs but I did a little trimming of what I saw that just kind of stood out and that was about it. Now I'm going to be putting on some rub. This is uh, Twisted Q Crooked Pig, Crooked Pig seasoning and so I'm just going to be coating the uh, baby backs on all sides with that now. And I'll say I'm not using a mustard binder this time because I'm planning on just letting these set in the fridge overnight to uh, basically just kind of get this rub in them, you know, good overnight just setting in the fridge. And so I think with them just kind of setting still like that, I won't need to use any type of special binder or anything. It'll probably hold in there pretty well. From just sitting in the fridge overnight. By the time I pull them out to cook them, the rub should be pretty solid on them. Well, not solid, but you know, be you know holding pretty well, pretty firm. So these ribs have been very well coated down with the rub. Going to just wrap them and uh, put them in the fridge overnight. So they just kind of will kind of set overnight. I'm going to get up early in the morning and I'm going to start smoking these then. So I'll bring you back in the morning and we'll continue with this cook then. Okay, so it's the next morning and I've had these ribs after I uh, took them out the fridge a little while earlier this morning, just uh, sitting out on the countertop for a moment to just kind of rest and not be a total, you know, refrigerator tent when I put them on the grill. And you probably also notice I've got the Green Mountain Grills Daniel Boone top rack there. I do plan on leveraging that top rack in this cook, so I'll have some on the regular rack and some on that top rack that you probably saw me unbox in an earlier video. So, gonna go ahead and get the grill all good and warmed up here. 
Okay, so out here at the grill, just gonna take my top rack for my Green Mountain Grills Daniel Boone, stick it on in there. So I'll just have to situate my other ribs kind of on the lower rack and then just put one on that top rack there. So I'm gonna go ahead and close up and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start my grill up. First I'm gonna connect to my grill and it's attempting to connect and it has connected successfully. Now I'm going to go ahead and power on the grill and now that the grill is starting to power on I'm going to set the starting temperature to 180 degrees and confirm that and now that I have that set I want to show you the profile that I'll be using for today's cook down here I have a baby back ribs profile I made up and basically after it gets to 180 and I put those ribs on I'm gonna be cooking them at 180 for six hours then I'm gonna set the temp up to 225 degrees and cook them for another two hours I will not be using any mop at all during this cook since the pellet smoker does a pretty good job of keeping ribs moist so after two hours of 225, I'm going to check which ribs are done, which are not done. I may have to take the ones from the top rack down to the lower rack and remove the rest. We'll see how that goes. But after that's done, then whatever's left over or remains, I'll cook for another two hours at 225. That's step three. So step three is really just for whatever remains and it's not already fully done the way I would prefer. So. At step, the end of step two, at the end of that first two hours of 225, I'll probably check some temps and look at pullback and things of that nature. And then just keep whatever needs to stay for step three. But I'll start that profile after I get the ribs on. So for now, I'm going to go ahead and give you the weather report. And the weather report in this area, I can tell you it's been raining a lot but uh, today is supposed to be clear. So at the moment, it's mostly cloudy, 73 degrees, real feel 80 degrees, humidity 95%, and wind speed is three miles an hour. And the UV index is low at the moment, but as the day goes on, it's supposed to get up to 93 with a real feel of 104 degrees, partly sunny and humid. So it's gonna get real hot, and so, uh, We'll see how these ribs fare with that. But I'll bring you back when it's time to put the ribs on. All right, so the grill has reached the target temp of 180 degrees. I'm gonna open up here and start putting these ribs on. Being able to leverage that top rack means I don't have to bunch my ribs too close together while they're cooking. I can leave some comfortable space for them all. <coughs> Although I probably could have, uh, you know, I guess if I got six racks, racks of ribs, I could have probably tried to coordinate them all in there. It would have been a tight squeeze for six, but probably could have got up to six in here if I wanted to. So I'm going to go ahead and get this closed up now. Alright, so now I'm going to go ahead and start this profile now that I've got the ribs on the grill. So I go into my baby back ribs profile and I'm going to do a start profile and confirm. Now that profile has been started. So I look here, I see that it's already started and running. So I'm going to go ahead and let that run. I'll uh, bring you back. Well, it's telling me to start the first step. I'll bring you back in about six hours. I'm not going to go moving these all around every once in a while. I'm just going to let them just cook straight for six hours like this. Bring you back when it's time to move them around. Okay, so things have been going for smoking at 180 for about five hours almost now. And so in another hour, it's going to kick up to 225. And I took a peek in there and I felt they looked a little uh, 
dry as far as the uh, the rub that I put on there is looking kind of dry even though the ribs themselves look like they're still sufficiently moist but I just didn't like the look of the rub being so dry on them so I'm just going to spray them with a little apple juice now so just open it up here as you can see everything looks great I mean it, it's looking sufficiently moist anyway I just want to just put a little a little moisture on top of the rub that I see that is dry but the ribs themselves are the meat's moist I just don't uh, like that dry look on the rub too dry I just like it to be a little moistened all right so that's good close it up and I'm just gonna let it run you know to kick up to 225 you can already see some some pullback starting on the bone already so I'm just gonna let them roll I'll bring you back later okay that first six hours is about almost up but I'm gonna stop the profile now and I'll explain to you in a moment while I'm why I'm gonna stop the profile so I'm going into my baby back ribs profile I'm gonna stop it so that stops the profile and now that I've that I've stopped that profile I've got the temp uh, holding at 180 I don't want it to kick up to the 225 and the reason why is for a moment in the fifth hour the grill was losing temp and it got down to like 120 it wasn't holding it at 180 it got down to 120 and I don't know if that was maybe the grill just wasn't detecting the heat or maybe there was a jam in the auger momentarily and so then the grill started over overcompensating by dumping a lot of pellets and so you know I saw it was making a lot of smoke it was looking pretty hot but it still wasn't showing the increase in temp for a little while and so I can't say I know why that is but I know because of that as it overcompensated the temp eventually went up later to like over 400 degrees because of all the pellets it dumped so the, the ribs got a little more heat in that fifth hour than I would have preferred but all the same they were looking done when just checked recently um, after they were getting into that fifth hour anyway before that happened so I'm just gonna go ahead and check temps and probably pull these ribs now so I get my temperature gauge in there and I'm gonna just get one of my gloves on and then I'm going to go ahead and start uh, start checking temp Okay, so I'm just going to go in and, and check the temp on these ribs. I don't know if I got a good spot there or not. I'll make sure I got a good new spot. Alright, that rib is not... Oh, it's picking up now. It's at 144, 133. See where it ends up. 150. We close the door. I get that. 155. It's still pick up 156. 57. It'll probably hit 160 or more very soon. Let's see where it goes. It's still at 158. It's still got a little ways to go there. Will it notice 160 or not? They're getting very 159. Yeah. I think we're about done. So I'm going to get my, uh, let's see, that's at 159. So I think that's pretty good. We want to get it 160 and we're 159. That's pretty decent. We'll try another spot. Get good in the meat. Let's 
check that. That's reading 150-ish. Let's see if I'm getting any pullback on the bone in here. Getting a little pullback. I'm going to let these run for about an hour at just 225 and then go ahead and, and pull them off given the current temperatures are close but not all the way there so I'm going to get it at 225 Oops. confirm and I'm going to let it run for an hour at 225 and then bring you on back. I think we'll really be done, good and done then and do some taste testing and such. Okay, so I let them smoke for that extra hour at 225 degrees. They did six at 180 and one hour at 225 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm gonna go ahead and try and do some temperature checks and see what we have in here now. See they're looking real done. I'm gonna start up top. Baby backs are so thin it's hard to get in good on a piece of meat, but let's see what we're reading. We're reading about 123 up there. 141, still moving up. 152 on that top one. 158. I think we're gonna get it at this rate, at this pace. Yeah, 162, alright, he's good and done. And go ahead and test another one. Shouldn't be any issues of food contamination given the meat that I'm testing is already fully cooked. All right, that bottom one now, yeah, he's at a good 164. Hold at 164, so he's good and done. So I'm going to go ahead and try and do some movement of the ribs here. Get this one off this top rack. Make sure I don't let it fall over. Let's get that out of there for a moment. Get this rack off. Got a rack in the back. The rack in the back. Maybe I could write a Dr. Seuss book about ribs. Call it the rack in the back. All right, that one. I'm gonna close up. Yeah, now it's jumping up. Uh, 157, 163. Okay, we're all good and done. So we're gonna stop there take them inside for the taste testing all right so here go our ribs inside nice and safe I'm gonna cut some off here to do some taste testing I'm going to slice in the middle here I can show you the bone is pulled back there you probably can see that that meat's just falling right off there I mean I probably could have used a butter knife cut this rib off. Look at that. You see that smoke smoke ring in there? That looks pretty nice. So I'm going to get the camera adjusted, do a taste test. Alright, so here we go. And I will say for you who like to sauce your ribs at the end, anywhere in that last hour you could throw that sauce on there if that's your preference. So, I'm just going to test one of these straight up.
delicious. Delicious. Got a little stuck in my tooth there, even. <laughs> They're so good. Basically, winner all the way. Do this one. Do this one. Seriously. This is good. You won't be disappointed. Promise you. Tastes great. So, um, you can check me out on. Hold on one sec. Just had to get that piece out of my tooth there. It was bothering me for a minute. <laughs> but it's good. Anyway, um, check out um, Instagram. D Grill Smoke on Instagram, IGTV. I'm also doing an IGTV, IGTV version of this video that you're seeing here, but doing that with my phone as I go through the steps to uh, give you a vertical view and uh, show you some of the steps there. That one will probably be a lot shorter, probably have a lot less detail. But check out the Instagram, D Grill Smoke. Check out Twitter, D Grill Smoke. Check out the uh, website, the blog, dgrillsmoke.com, and on YouTube, the YouTube channel is D Grill, as you know, so if you'd like this, you can give it a thumbs up, you can subscribe to this D Grill YouTube channel, share the video with your friends, and uh, definitely try this, I hope you enjoyed it, I'm going to go and tear these ribs up, and so I wish you all the best, and good eating.